we're gonna get some major shade over here. So I'm just gonna put on my... <laughs> Who, me? Drama? No. As an artist and a content creator, I spend a lot of time doing research and watching other art creators. And I'm always looking for pockets. Pockets, pockets, pockets. Pockets of space where there are gaps in learning and where I can bring my own experience and my own knowledge to teach you what other people aren't teaching. And while there's a lot of amazing content out there, I've noticed that there are a few things that many art YouTubers are not telling you that I really feel that you should know because, I don't know, it really upsets me when I get messages or comments from artists of, of all levels feeling discouraged because they're looking at YouTube or Instagram or TikTok content, which comes across looking so glossy and perfect and effortless that they feel like they aren't measuring up to those impossible standards. So today, I'm gonna shed some light on the three dirty little secrets that all art YouTubers are doing that no one really talks about. Number one, let's talk about one of the most common misconceptions about art videos, the timeline. Do you ever watch a video tutorial and feel deflated when it looks like your favorite creator is whipping out masterpiece after masterpiece in, I don't know, 15 minutes or even less? Or maybe you're wondering um, how some of the artists that you follow on social media are nonstop painting these incredible paintings every, every single day. And they're like, wow, everyone is killing it while I'm sitting here agonizing over painting a single leaf. Wow, I really suck. How is it everyone is excelling at everything every single day? Super simple. They aren't. Shut the front door. What? While it may look like many artists out there are able to paint amazing pieces at the drop of a hat, I don't care how talented or experienced you are, the process takes a lot longer and um, is more involved than everyone lets on. Enter one word, editing. And what I can guarantee you is that everyone does it. This video right now is edited. <laughs> Hello, Margot A. How you doing, Margot B? Is this video edited? It sure is. So it's usually pretty obvious, especially when a video is sped up to show a time lapse or edited to look like it's going faster than it really is. And that's the most obvious form of editing. What you don't see, however, is all the other kind of edits or even the preparation before the brush even touches the paper. We're talking about the weeks it took to come up with a concept, the time it took to sketch out an idea, refine it, do a couple of test paintings before attempting the real thing. Even for people who record paintings in real time, what you don't see are the many, many hours, the many years even, where they created crappy paintings to prepare them for what you're seeing in that 10 minute snapshot of footage. It's kind of the equivalent of like looking on social media and seeing people taking these amazing vacations and having these fantastic lives. And it's easy to get caught up in that and think that everyone's life is just perfect when that couldn't be farther from the case, honestly. And so like while Simone Biles doing a triple double at the Olympics is really impressive, everyone seems to know and understand that not only, you know, was there a warm up pre Olympic session? I don't know, like pre final? She spent years of her life leading her to that one moment. But that's just how any acquired skill works. And by the way, I'm not saying anyone goes into it trying to be dishonest. The fact of the matter is that most of your online creators, myself included, are subject to the same laws of the internet gods. And that boils down to two very simple things the algorithm and people's attention span. So if I were to document the full and completely unedited process of a very involved art piece, and I'm, I'm talking about something that I'm really proud of and that is really elaborate, every single step, everything that it took to get to that final painting, whether that's the idea, the research, practicing, trying out different options, failing, throwing the sheet away, starting over, the development, all the details of every single pencil mark and every single brushstroke from beginning to end. Very few people would wanna watch that because it would take hundreds upon 
hundreds of hours of watching time. Mom, this is so boring. Why'd you take me here? Can we go home? And seriously, no one has time for that. Even if you did have the time on your hands to binge watch it, YouTube would hate me for posting it and would likely bury it to the very bottom, the, the depths, the, the abyss of its feed because it's boring. Boring. But herein lies the dilemma. We're trying to push out content that's watchable, that's fun, that's informative, but we can't show you everything. And then when people watch the abridged version and wonder how it looks so easy, I think it sends the wrong message across because it's anything but effortless. So you see, we're kind of in a catch-22 situation here. Side note, can you imagine what it would be like if Michelangelo had to vlog and document the entire process of painting the Sistine Chapel. And I honestly don't think that Michelangelo would have the patience to be sitting there with his selfie stick, like, you know, painting God's hand. So next time you feel overwhelmed and hopeless and alone and like you're not living up to these standards, come back to my channel. Just kidding. Just remember that you are so not alone in this and that the whole process can take a very long time. And, you know, I heard it said by somebody else and I, I wish I remembered who said it. It isn't art unless you're having some kind of existential crisis on your hands. And that leads me to my next topic, which is imposter syndrome. Most people posting content on YouTube look super confident and look like they know exactly what they're doing on every topic they post. But newsflash, of all the immensely talented artists and teachers that I've met throughout the duration of my professional career, I have yet to come upon a single person that does not struggle in some way with imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud. While you might think that all I need is more experience, more artwork, more confidence to gain that confidence that I so desperately need, here's the deal with imposter syndrome. It never goes away. Because anytime you create something that is um, true to who you are, that's meaningful to you, you're exposing yourself to the possibility that someone is going to walk on by and is going to poo-poo your idea, poo-poo your talent, judge you, and doubt your skills. Art sucks. You're living a lie. You're living a lie. Yeah, take it down. You're living a lie. Art has always been my vocation. It was what I was trained at. I spent years working professionally in one of the most competitive cities in the world. I started my own design company. And I'm not saying that to pat my own back, but just to demonstrate that even for somebody with my experience, I am not joking when I say that I am often looking over my shoulder, waiting for someone to come out of the woodwork and you know, exposing me for being a phony or a fake or to call me out for not knowing what I'm doing or what I'm talking about. And you would think that with all this time that that fear would go away, but it doesn't. So the thing is, the biggest reward comes from facing your fears. And if you never sum up the courage to leave the safety of the nest, there's absolutely no way you're going to learn how to fly or ride a bike teach my son how to ride a bike soon. And so while some people might call it fake it till you make it, or simply just the word confidence, I like to think of it as an unwavering belief in oneself. And this is a trait that can be found in all successful people, whether you're a successful YouTuber, a successful artist, a su successful creator of any kind, um, anything across the spectrum. By putting yourself out there, even if you don't feel 100% confident in what you're doing, just taking the risk and, you know, coming to the table and trying and seeing and, and seeing and sharing with the world what you have to offer. Um, and this is not to say that you're being disingenuous or fraudulent, um, especially for YouTubers. I'm not saying anybody's being um, disingenuous. It's just they're pushing themselves out of their comfort zones and taking a leap of faith. We are all afraid of the same things and we are all afraid of the same judgments. So I hope this is motivating for you so far um, and it's helping you feel empowered because this is not about tearing other artists down or other YouTubers down. And obviously I can't speak for everyone, but I've been around enough artists and professionals to be able to tell you what I think is the real deal. Okay, and that brings me to my last big secret. Are you ready for this? So, do you ever watch a tutorial or hear an art teacher or a YouTuber say, never hold your brush like this, or don't do this, or, don't do that, or never use fugitive paints, or only use professional art materials? 
Oh wait, that's me. Uh -oh. Sounds like a lot of rules, right? Here's the deal about rules. Good art usually finds a way to break them. I always like to think of artists as a band of pirates. Every great artist throughout history has challenged the status quo in some way. And as artists, it's something that I think that we all share in some way. It's a, it's a part of our DNA. But when you get here on YouTube or, you know, out on the internet, you're constantly barraged with people, and especially like comments from people telling you what you should and should not be doing. Like there's some sort of 10 commandments. And if you don't bow down to them, you're gonna burn in art hell for all of eternity. Art hell is a lot of fun. I'm there all the time. And let me tell you, the parties are fantastic. But seriously though, that fear of coloring outside the lines is where a lot of people get it wrong. So to give you an example, let me tell you about one of my favorite artists of all time. Jackson Pollock. He was a pioneer of the abstract expressionist movement and so he dripped and threw his paint on canvases and did some pretty unconventional things with his art which most people are familiar with. But here's the interesting part. Jackson Pollock, who was obviously very very talented and very knowledgeable about making paintings, made a really unusual decision when it came down to painting and the materials he chose. So instead of opting for archival quality oil paints, he would go into the hardware store and buy house paints. Like the kind of paints you use to paint your bedrooms. This is painting your bedroom. <laughs> so obviously this made his gallerist really angry because they were trying to sell his paintings for top dollar. And the fact that his paints were in oil and um, they weren't long-term archival was going to be really problematic. But Pollock had his own vision of what he wanted to do. He enjoyed the texture and the drippy consistency that those specific paints provided. So get this, what the gallerist ended up doing was secretly breaking into Pollock's studio, replacing the house paints with proper oil paints. But when Pollock found out, he just threw away all those paints and went back to what he wanted. So he was like, nah, I'm, I'm just gonna do my own thing. And he stood by his own artistic choices, even if it meant going against what other people were expecting him to do. So sure, some of his pieces have seen some conservation issues even today, but who are we to judge his decisions and what drove him to make them? So from that story, the big takeaway is that we have to learn to accept that while there will be tons of other, sometimes, actually often, well-meaning people out there telling us what to do, what not to do, the truth of the matter is that with art, all bets are off and there are absolutely no rules whatsoever. So those are the three things that art YouTubers are not telling you that I think that you should know. And when I was starting out on this YouTube journey, I wish that I knew as well, because at the end of the day, I think that these are all things that plague artists of all walks of life, whether you are a YouTuber, whether you're a professional designer, artist, illustrator, whether you're doing this during your own free time in your bedroom, um, you know, these are these are the same trials and tribulations that all artists feel. The only difference is that the ones of us who do share our work online have to press a little red record button before we start. Kind of like, well, this one isn't red, but the one on my camera is. And if this video has inspired you to throw caution in the wind and to go for it, I would love to share more with you about how to embrace your own artistic voice and to find your own style. And there's a video right here, so hopefully I can help you along on that journey as well, so you can have the confidence to express yourself um, authentically in your art. In the meantime, keep creating, keep learning, and most importantly, keep believing in yourself. You've got this. See you in the next art video.